All right, so we're talking about love here on Tack Room Devotional. What a great subject. But remember, the kind of love that we're talking about is the love of God, not the love of the world. The love of God is unconditional and sacrificial. The love of the world says, I love you as long as you love me the way I want to be loved, how I want to be loved, and, and if you'll do everything just right, I'll keep you around for a while. But as soon as you mess up, I'm going to replace you. God's love is not an emotional um, emotion. God's love is a commandment. Love your wives. Husbands, love your wives. Love your enemies. See, the only way you can love your enemy is by it being a commandment. It's not an emotion because how could you emotionally feel good about loving your enemy? So that's the kind of love we're talking about. Well, here in the first couple, yesterday in the first, uh, I guess it was four no, three uh, passages or three um, verses. We talked about the gifts of the S Spirit because Paul is talking about that in chapter 12. Moving into chapter 13, he tells us you can have all these gifts. You can be a mighty man uh, of God. Yet if you don't do it with love, it profits nobody anything. So we need to learn this kind of love. We need to learn the love of God. Amen. So if we pick it up in verse 4, it says, Love suffers long and is kind. Okay, so, so do you see that? I, I mean, that's the love of God. That's not the love of the world. Love suffers long and is kind. In other words... Sometimes when your wife doesn't seem to uh, do the things you want her to, the way you want her to and everything, it tells us that love suffers. Love suffers long. In other words, you don't give up just because somebody doesn't respond to you the way you want to. Someone doesn't um, express love towards you the way you want them to. You don't just kick them to the curb. No, it says love suffers long. As a matter of fact, the kind of love that we're talking about not only is unconditional, but remember it's sacrificial. This kind of love says, wait a minute. If it means me dying to myself so that other person can live, if it means me going reconciling and making something, you know, uh, maybe going and, and uh, apologizing and you say, yeah, but what they did to me... It was their fault, not my fault. No, no, no. Remember, if we're going to love like Christ loved, it's, it's uh, sacrificial. It means that you go and say, hey, listen, whatever is wrong, whatever I've done wrong towards you, I want to fix it right now. And you seek to reconcile. Amen? So it says, love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself. Is not puffed up does not behave rudely. Now I know many times in a husband-wife relationship, man, I can hear some rude, horrible things between a husband and wife. It shouldn't be. Goes on to say, it does not seek its own. Oh, see, this can't be the love of the world because the love of the world seeks its own. But the love of God doesn't. It goes on to say, is not provoked. In other words, you can't provoke me, though my wife... Um, may do something that I don't appreciate, maybe even hurts me with words or whatever, it doesn't provoke me to anger, it doesn't provoke me to jealousy, doesn't provoke me to bitterness, doesn't provoke me to anything that the enemy tries to use to separate my wife and I. Does that make sense? Goes on to say, thinks no evil. Oh, there's times when my wife says something and does something, man, in the world I'd like to deal with it. But you see, what I do, and my wife and I have this agreement, when we lock horns, she goes her way, I go my way, we go to our prayer closets, we pray and ask God to change our hearts. Not to change the other person's heart, but to change our heart. God, what can I do to fix this? Amen. So it goes on, thinks no evil. So don't you be thinking evil of your wife or thinking evil of your husband. You keep, as a matter of fact, the Bible says God calls those things that are not as though they are. You and I are made in the likeness and image of God. We too need need to call those things that are not as though they are. So though my wife may have hurt me in some way, my wife is a godly wife, full of the Spirit of God. And if she's full of the Spirit of God, she has the fruit of the Spirit, which is love and kindness and peace and joy and all the rest of those things. So that's what I speak over my wife. I don't think evil. Love does not rejoice in iniquity or weakness, but rejoices in the truth. 
Love rejoices in the truth. When my wife says, hey, I've got a problem with you, I need to listen to her and recognize I'm the one that can fix that problem. And I need to hear it in truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things. Here it is, and endures all things. How husbands and wives split up, I have no idea. The love that we're talking about right here is the love of God, and it endures all things. Amen. Hey, Jesus loves you. I love you. I pray that God would richly bless you as you diligently seek him and serve him.